The first named storm of the season hits the UK. It's a multi-hazard event. Wind probably generate the most widespread impacts. I'm certainly expecting some snow across parts of northern Scotland. It's Thursday, the 25th of November, and you're listening to Weather Snap from the Met Office. Storm Arwen has been named by the UK Met Office, bringing multiple hazards to the country through Friday and into the weekend. With more details, here's Chief Forecaster Dan Suri. Dan, I know you're really busy, but let's just crack on with what's happening right now. It's the first storm of the season. A bit of a shock to the system, isn't it? Yeah, hi there, Claire. Yeah, it's the first um, storm that's been named by the Met Office, Carnamy in Holland and Met Air and Storm Naming Collaboration. And yeah, the storm... Are when it's been named, it's developing to the north of Iceland at the moment. It develops rapidly as it moves southeastwards to get into the northern North Sea uh, by early Friday. And then the idea is Arwen then continues slowly southwards across the North Sea during the course of Friday to eventually end up over the um, near continent um, during Saturday daytime. So, yeah, as you say, it is a big event. Um, it's it's going to be very, very windy across large chunks of the UK, particularly later on Friday onwards into Saturday morning. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the timings of this bad weather. And it's not great because obviously it coincides with Friday rush hour. That's right, yeah. What we're going to see happening is that the associated rain bands come across the UK during, um, well, they're getting into Scotland as we speak, really, and they're going to come across the UK during Thursday night and then clear away during Friday. And they'll be followed by further areas of rain and for some places sleet and snow as well. Winds are obviously the really big thing. And in terms of the timing of the wind, we're going to see the, the first batch of high winds reach the far north of Scotland during Friday morning. And then what will happen is during Friday afternoon, those high winds will extend across large chunks of Scotland into Northern Ireland and perhaps get as far as the Isle of Man. And then Friday evening, those high winds then will extend further southwards, spreading into northeast England, as well as coastal parts of Wales and southwest England. OK, let's now go back and talk about how strong these winds are going to be, because you have issued an amber warning for the east of Scotland, northeast England. So, you know, how intense will these gusts be? So we've got an amber warning in force for parts of northern and eastern Scotland and northeast England, mainly for coastal areas. And in coastal areas, we're looking at gusts getting into 65 to 75 miles an hour. And in some places, we will see gusts in excess of 75 miles an hour. And those places with the highest gusts are going to be the most exposed coastal areas, I would have thought. And inland, gusts perhaps a little bit less. But even so, what sort of damage are we thinking about here? That's right, gusts will be a little bit less inland, but nevertheless it is going to be very windy and uh, I'm I'm expecting quite a wide range of impacts to be perfectly honest. There's the obvious impacts on traffic, particularly in crossed winds and particularly for high-sided vehicles. Obviously the magnitude of winds on offer are such that they could cause some damage to trees, some of which are still in leaf, which gives a greater damage potential. Buildings and temporary structures, such as the kind of thing that may be used for Christmas fairs, that sort of thing, they could well be uh, damaged as well. Not out of the question that power lines being damaged, it wouldn't surprise me to see reports of power outages as we go through the next couple of days. There's also the potential for some uh, coastal impacts as well from the uh, from the high winds generating very high waves, particularly in North Sea coastal areas. So the strongest winds as we head into Saturday will be more England and Wales, Irish Sea coast, but also inland. By the time we take it to midnight Saturday, the highest winds then still over northeast England and eastern Scotland, as well as in Irish sea coastal areas. And then by the time we get to dawn on Saturday, we'll see winds beginning to abate across Northern Ireland and Scotland. The highest winds first thing Saturday, then into eastern and northeastern England, as well as Irish sea coastal areas. And then what we'll then see is during the course of Saturday, winds gradually and slowly abating it'll still be a very windy day for most areas very highest winds are really going to be friday afternoon through until saturday morning and finally dan it's not just wind we're concerned about here it's rain and particularly snow over the higher ground but even at lower levels that's right it's a multi-hazard event um wind will be will probably generate the most widespread impacts and certainly that'll be the main hazard really rain there will be some heavy rain at times um we're in a situation where we haven't had too much rain recently so perhaps not quite as worried about that Sleet and snow, that's a more difficult one. I'm certainly expecting some snow across parts of northern Scotland during Friday afternoon and evening. That will mainly be over slightly higher ground, so above 200 to 300 metres really, um, with the bulk of accumulations above 300 metres during Friday afternoon and evening. But nevertheless, that could impact parts of the road network over parts of northern Scotland. What we'll see during Friday evening and Friday night, though, is areas of rain, sleet and snow coming southwards. It's still a little bit difficult to know exactly where the balance is going to lie. Certainly for higher ground elsewhere in Scotland, as well as northern England, I would expect some snow to fall. Dan Surrey. So, Storm Arwen is set to bring a lively start to the weekend, 
But where do we go from there? Here's Deputy Chief Forecaster Dan Rudman. So we've just heard from Chief Forecaster Dan Shuri about the greatest impacts over the next 48 hours or so. The worst of the weather eases later on Saturday, is that correct? And what happens after that? That is correct. Certainly the worst of the winds ease later on Saturday. But as those winds ease away, we'll still have some snow showers left, mainly affecting the north, northeast and moving on to northeastern coasts. So there will be some snow showers, uh, although we're not looking at very much in the way of snow accumulations there. So a dusting of the hills and the higher ground near to eastern coasts, I think. But eventually, even that starts to ease towards the end of Sunday. OK, so let's talk about those snow showers. If people are travelling um, into Sunday or Saturday evening, is it just higher routes we're talking about here or even at lower levels? No, even at low levels near the east coast. I think right on the coast, uh, the temperatures will still be just above zero. So we're likely to have rain. But just inland from the coast, there might be a, an area, the North York Moors, East Anglia, where we might see some snow showers coming to lower levels as well. And then the temperatures plummet. It gets a lot colder into Sunday morning. Am I correct? It does get colder into Sunday morning. Yeah, it gets very cold, actually, in some places. So we're talking about widespread temperatures below zero away from the very near to the east coast and away from West Wales and the southwest, probably. In the south, we could see temperatures as low as minus five, minus six. In Scotland, we could see temperatures to minus 10 or even a little bit lower, especially where we've got some ground that might be still covered by any snow. So we're talking the cold is there we've experienced for quite some time and obviously lying snow, but a risk of ice? Yeah, it'd certainly be the coldest that we've experienced this winter, I think. The coldest areas are always going to be where we've got snow lying on the ground and where you do have snow that's melted through the daytime or possibly where some of those showers have fallen um, during the afternoon. They could well freeze over the road, so there could well be a risk of ice around early in the mornings, yes. So Storm Arwen by this stage has cleared the shores of the UK. We're into a very cold scenario into Sunday morning. Will that cold air still be with us as we're waking up and stepping out on Monday morning? It depends where you are. Uh, we are looking at warmer air approaching from the west. So probably later on Monday, the far west will start to see the influence of that uh, first thing on Monday morning. And that will move over the UK through the day on Monday so that by the end of the day on Monday into Tuesday, things look a little bit warmer and we could see some some rain on that. Now, there's a very slight risk that as that, that boundary between the warm and the colder air, we could see some further snow, but it's not looking like uh, we're going to see significant accumulations on that because as the warm air moves over the country, that'll soon start to turn to rain and it'll melt. But then for the uh, beyond that, uh, the warm air will hang around for a few days, but we are looking at a, a transition between warm air and cold air, probably repeating itself uh, as we've seen over the last few days over the coming weeks. Dan Rudman, thank you very much. For more details where you are in relation to Storm Arwen, check out our Met Office weather app or stay tuned to regular updates on our social media channels. Just before we go, Martin Bowles has the weather extremes for last week. Here is your roundup of the UK weather extremes for the week between Monday the 15th of November and Sunday the 21st of November. The highest temperature of the week was a remarkable 16.8 degrees Celsius at Dice Airport near Aberdeen on Thursday. This was caused by a pronounced fern effect over the Scottish mountains. The same conveyor belt weather system that caused the high temperatures in Aberdeen brought prolonged rainfall to the west of the mountains. Resalac in Sutherland topped the rainfall charts for three days running. The highest daily value here was 57.6 mm on Thursday. That weather system eventually cleared southwards at the end of the week, leaving a significantly colder air mass behind it over the UK. The lowest recorded temperature in this period was minus 1.3 Celsius at Bridgefoot in Cumbria in the early hours of Sunday morning. As the cold front moved away to the south, the clouds cleared too, bringing the largest daily sunshine total of the week to Dundrennan in the far southwest of Scotland. 7.5 hours was recorded here during Sunday. Thanks, Martin. Well, that's it for this week's Weather Snap. Please do stay safe. I'm Claire Nazir, and the editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office.